In today's video, we're gonna show you how we fix this busted up cinder block basement, what was wrong with it, how we added exterior insulation, and how we made it up to code. Stay tuned. Okay. So I was contacted by this client of mine. Now, this problem had been happening for a long time. It had been over several years. They'd noticed the cracking in the cinder block basement and it had been getting progressively worse and especially just bad in the last few years. So they were getting a little bit urgent saying, hey, can you come and look at this? Finally, when we looked at it, it at first we weren't exactly sure what was wrong with it but it took a, just, it didn't even take that much investigating to figure out what the cause of the problem was. So first we had to figure out what the cause was. And so Luke and I, the carpenter of mine, who's been with me a long time and he's in other videos too, he's awesome. He, uh, he was helping me out. We started, okay, we gotta find out if there's frost wall on this walkout basement because if there's no walkout or if there's no frost wall, then our suspicions would be correct in thinking that frost is getting under the corner of the house and basically frost jacking the corner and cracking it all out. So we started digging out the northeast corner and we dug down and we got down about that far. And we're thinking, oh man, like there's a frost wall here. It's going to be awesome. But then we were perplexed because if there was a frost wall, we wouldn't know what was causing the problem. So anyway, long story short, we dug just a little bit more and the corner was super deep. But yeah, there was no frost protection. So in a nutshell, that walkout basement, you're supposed to step everything down with the slope so that you're, you always, so no matter what the grade is, the dirt work on the outside of the house, you always need four feet of frost wall and a footing below that. So you need four feet below frost to stop frost from getting underneath and jacking the building up. So yeah, we dug in three or four other spots and we exactly found out that it was literally a footing poured on the ground for the walkout. So who knows who built this place, but they did it wrong. And if you look carefully, where you get in a little closer, you could tell there's no rebar in the footings either because rebar would have held the footing together. It would have frost jacked it up and down, but it wouldn't have split it apart and pulled apart like it did. So that corner of the house, that Northeast corner, it looked like it was ready to just get and kick itself out. Like it was getting bad. So anyway, let's show you how we fixed it. We had to come up with the most economical plan, but something that would work for sure. So what we ended up doing is we, okay, we're not going to try to put in a frost wall. That's going to cost way too much. We can't go and start ripping the house apart and re and patching up the center block. We need to fix the core of the problem. So a fix the footing. We'll show you how we did that. And then B, we thought, well, we could insulate it from the outside. We could fix the rebar. We could do all that, but it's still going to be susceptible to frost. So we decided, okay, well, it's already on a hill. They have some land. We can get some dirt. We're going to put two retaining walls beside the walkout basement door. We have a special way we're going to insulate that, but essentially we're going to add exterior insulation. We're going to fix this thing up. We're going to waterproof it and then we're going to backfill it. And now we have frost protection. So that's what we did. Okay. So basically step one was get an excavator out there, dig out as much of the north side as we could, and then figure out how much space we need to, to form up and pour these retaining walls. So we dug those down four feet below frost. So first thing we had to do is fix the footing. Now, like I said before, we knew it didn't have rebar because it was pulling apart. And you could see like on the corner, the footing is all along this line here. And we dug out and even by the walkout door, you can see it's a little bit of concrete, which is the footing and then dirt underneath. That's all it is. It should be a four foot wall there. So anyway, we're trying to think, okay, what's the best way to fix this footing? Well, we need rebar a, but we also need to attach it to the old footing. So we have photos of that, but I just want to show you kind of like, top view looking down so your footing is just a, a strip of concrete right so we're top view looking down right so this was north just so you know and this is east so there's a giant crack here and a giant crack here and there's others so essentially what we did is we drilled in holes here and here we drilled it into the footing and then we bent rebar, 15 millimeter rebar, 
and we epoxied it into the hole and then bent this piece that way. Did the same here and bent the piece that way, overlapped, tied it, right? And we did that in several locations and, and several depths. So this thing is laced with all these, I don't even know what you call them, these stirrups. And then eventually we ran a long bar all the way along the top to connect it all. We did the same, we wrapped it around the corner. We did hooks and these are all epoxied in so they can never fall away from the footing. And then we formed up a two by six around the outside, staked it. And we basically just poured a footing. So this is all new concrete. So hopefully the photos can help you determine what we did. So what that's gonna do is if there is any frost, it's never gonna separate more than it is already. It's gonna hold state strong and true. It's not going anywhere. If frost gets under there, it's all held together as best as possible, right? So we did that. When we poured those footings, we poured the footings for the retaining walls. Then we jumped on the retaining walls. They were ICF, so it's relatively easy to do. You don't need fancy form work. You just stack the blocks we did some vertical bracing and some turnbuckles. Um, it was a little tricky because we had the pump truck and then the hose like wrapped around under the deck. So it was a bit of a pain to pour it. But we poured the retaining walls and now we're ready for backfill. So then I guess what I need to show you, well, let's just show right here, top view looking down. Let's say the door is here and this is a new retaining wall. Remember top looking down and this is a new retaining wall. What we did is to try to frost protect here because now we're going to be backfilled all along here. Now we still have a few steps to go. Stay with me. This is all going to be backfilled. So now we're frost protected. Now this little chunk in between here is not frost protected. So what we did is before we backfilled this, we added some layers of sheet insulation against there so that frost wouldn't drive in and push just this chunk up. So then we backfilled it. We backfilled it all level. Now we had some surface to work from. There's a few other details like they added a window and yeah, they added a window and cut some bigger ones and moved them around. That's whatever, we're not gonna get into that. So essentially the next step was we're gonna add three quarter inch plywood to the outside of the sink. Now the plywood would also help give that cinder block rigidity. And it also helps us on our next step to add that exterior insulation. So the plywood we basically just adhered with concrete screws right into the cinder block, gives it rigidity and then, yeah. So the plywood was dual purpose. It also allowed us to attach this paneling system to it. So this is called Homega. It's made by Nadura, same guys that made the ICF block. Now it's four by eight sheets. On this house, we use the two and five eighths thick. This stuff's three and a half, but it's sheet foam, but it has the wood furring strips built into it. And what's beauty about that is once you apply this, it's a one step system. It's got the insulation. And now what you can see when it's all put up, now we can attach siding to it. We can paper, like we got to paper it anyway, but you can stucco it, you can parge it, you can put cement board on it, you can do anything. Right? So not only did we do and repair the house, but we also added the step to add the insulation value to it, which is nice. Now we've moved the thermal mass of that cinder block to the inside. And we also stopped a lot of the air leakage and everything too. Okay, so after all the insulation panels were on, the whole mega, remember that. There's lots of videos on it that are coming out. Well, then we treated it like a foundation. We did some peel and stick like we would on an ICF. So we peel and stick down, like, you know, above grade, down the wall, over and across the footing and did it just like we normally did. We wrapped it around these retaining walls. It's all waterproofed, above grade. We're actually gonna stucco this place so we're, we have a little bit of a system, but we'll do some synthetic paper and then tar paper on top. I have a reason for that, but that's too much time. So then after it was all waterproofed, then we found the weeping tile, the old one, and we extended the weeping tile around the footing, just like that. We did some over here. Then we just filled it in with washed rock. 
And then we backfilled it a little bit, but because we hit winter time, we can't do the full four feet, but we know it's not gonna get any worse and it's all gonna be held and it's gonna hold. So we'll finish backfilling there. Um, we also have some custom flashings that we did. So we have a recessed window. So we'll show you a few things there. And then because now if you're looking at the wall from a side view, now this sheet foam, and here's our plywood in behind, it sticks proud of the old stuck over here right it's a little bit proud so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of an incision into the stucco here we're going to come down with a flashing do a drip lip back and over this will be a this will be new stucco here this will be inserted now any water that runs down sheds off and just falls away so we'll show you some pictures of that, how we did the flashings. But essentially that's, that's how we did the repair. You can see the before where it was all cracked and busted up. And now, even though it's not stuck out, it looks really nice and tidy. We know it's a solid fix. It's not ever gonna move, it, move or do anything. We added insulation and it, you know, it's never gonna be the cheapest fix. It's the foundation of your house, but it was a, a a well thought out plan didn't take that long to do and uh, I think it was the the best value that we could possibly give to the client so that's a wrap thanks for tuning in I'm Cody with up to code don't forget to like and subscribe in today's video we're gonna do stuff let me think for a sec I don't know if you need to film this uh, yeah then we had some coffees and you know, drank some beers. <laughs> Luke did all the work because I was, you know, I was like, hey, Luke, this is what we're going to do. And then, okay, you do everything else. And I'll see you later. Uh, okay. When you're ready. Okay. Just when you're ready. Though. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, Heidi.